This tornado was heading straight towards me at over 50 miles per hour. I wasn't chasing the tornado. The tornado was chasing me. And the craziest thing was, this tornado had a twin, and it was one of the most powerful tornadoes in history. This was, by far, the most dangerous storm I have ever chased. Late May is peak tornado season, so when a moderate risk set up over Iowa, of course I was there. Choosing a target was actually easy. Everything was pointing towards southwest Iowa, where extreme surface vorticity and low-level cape were perfectly overlapping. The target was locked. I was heading straight for the town of Red Oak, Iowa, where I met up with my friend Kelton. Soon after, storms initiated to our southwest. We were in the perfect position. The storms were coming straight towards us. But we briefly moved and started hearing reports of a tornado in Red Oak, the very town we were just sitting in. The situation was already stressful, and to make matters worse, Kelton and I both lost all cell phone signal, leaving us completely without radar. We then stopped to think about our next move. As we sat at the intersection, other chasers, Max Olson and Aaron Rigsby, flew by us going south towards the tornado. Maybe they knew something we didn't, because instead of going south, we decided to go east, leaving us with a better view of the reported tornado. At least that was the theory. Oh yeah. Alright, I think I see it. When I first see a tornado, one of the first things I do is check which direction it's moving. If it's moving left or right, then I'm safe. But if it's not moving at all, that means I'm in the path. We're right in the path, dude! We were right in the path, so we kept moving east. As Kelton and I drove east, the tornado continued to get closer and closer. Oh man, that's pretty. And while we still had some space between us and the tornado, we really couldn't stop and record because it was moving so quickly. Keep moving! So we kept moving east, recording from our cars. Damn. We got a pretty one! As the tornado moved towards our location, it appeared to be getting even stronger. All tornadoes like this are extremely dangerous to chase, especially for me. The thing is, Strong tornadoes are actually quite rare. There's a much bigger threat we face every single day, the internet. Whether you're browsing, streaming, or working remotely on public Wi-Fi, your personal data is at risk. And the best way to protect yourself from the dangers of the internet is by joining NordVPN, the sponsor for this video. Using NordVPN is like putting an extra impenetrable barrier between your computer and the rest of the internet, keeping your data and computer completely safe. And not only does it provide all of this protection, NordVPN does not track or share your browsing data, which is extremely important to me. If you're looking to protect your personal and browsing data, you can get started today by using the link in the description or by using code HRCHRIS. Using my link will get you an exclusive NordVPN deal and four extra months. If you're not happy with the services, which you won't be, it's totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. If I'm chasing tornadoes, yeah, I'm high-risk Chris. But when it comes to the internet, I do not like taking my chances, which is why I use NordVPN. Since the tornado was getting so incredible and was starting to get much closer, I didn't want to keep recording from my moving car. So I started looking for a nice place to stop and record. But this is when things got even more dangerous. I tried to let Kelton know I was stopping, but he kept driving east. So now I was chasing this strong tornado by myself. He can keep going. This is my life, I can do what I want. And I'm glad I stopped because the tornado was gorgeous. Wow. And while I was about five miles north of the tornado, to the south, Max and Aaron were right behind the tornado. Yep, it's gonna cross right in front of us. Per usual, these two were getting some of the best tornado footage of the year. And this is what I was seeing, not quite as good pretty strong. When you're downstream from a tornado like this, it's almost like you're playing a game of chicken. And while I still had room, the tornado was moving at nearly 60 miles per hour, so my time was extremely limited. 
view of the tornado started to get extremely obstructed by rain, making the situation even more dangerous than it already was. The tornado became so wrapped in rain, it was nearly impossible to see. So I got back in my car and started moving east with the storm. But the thing was, my view of the tornado was only getting worse. I then made it to an intersection where I faced an extremely difficult decision. Directly to my south was the tornado. The other option was to drive east, but that meant racing across the tornado's path, the most dangerous maneuver in storm chasing. And I can tell you that from experience. Crossing a tornado's path is the one thing you should never do as a storm chaser. The safest option was to drive north away from the tornado. Eventually, I made the decision. I was not going to make the same mistake I made last year. I can't keep going east. Gotta go north. And while I drove north, I was unaware that there was actually another tornado. That's a strong tornado. Fellow storm chaser Colton Flint had a perfect view of this other tornado. And the crazy thing was, this tornado was even stronger than the first tornado, which was now roping out. While the rope out of the year was happening, this was my view. Meanwhile, Kelton was still driving to the east, and little did he know, he was right in the path of the second violent tornado. His rear dash cam captured the tornado crossing the road right behind him. Kelton narrowly escaped the tornado, but it was still on the ground, now moving towards the town of Greenfield, the town I was driving towards. I started getting a bad feeling about what I was doing. I was driving straight towards a nearly invisible tornado, so I aborted the mission and drove south, putting me well behind the tornado. I then got stuck in the mud. Eventually, I got unstuck. At this point, there was zero chance I was catching up with the tornado, so I made my way into town. As I got closer to town, I began to see the one thing I never want to see. The tornado had moved through this area less than five minutes ago, and since no one else was here to help, there was only one thing to do. Everyone's all right. That was intense. <sighs> no kidding. No kidding. As I made my way into Greenfield, I began to realize the worst case scenario had taken place. Yeah, Greenfield was hit. Really, really bad. Wanting to give as much space to the emergency workers, but still document this historic event, I flew my drone over the damage path, and what I saw made me sick to my stomach. Buildings pulverized into tiny little pieces, some completely wiped off of their foundations. In my five years of chasing, this is by far the worst tornado damage I have ever witnessed. Wow, this is craziness. Looking back, I consider May 21st to be one of the most dangerous storm chases for a few reasons. There were two extremely powerful, fast moving, totally rain wrapped tornadoes. And to top it all off, I was chasing totally exhausted with no radar and had gotten split up for my chase partner who himself was almost directly impacted by a tornado. The same tornado which had the fastest recorded winds in history. This day really just makes me sick to think about. One mistake could have resulted in my death. Because of the harsh lessons I learned last year, I did not make those same mistakes again. In total, five people were killed by the Greenfield tornado.